A bee. You want a big one? Okay. everyone welcome back to seed and sparrow homestead my name is kelsey if you are new around here um it has been a little while since we have gone through the garden so we're gonna do that today um the road is pretty noisy so i apologize and my kids are really noisy too and you're gonna hear the rooster so lots of background noise going on and i'm pretty sure the farmer in the backfield is working on some irrigation so lots of noise today um but it's been a little while since we've been out here things got busy I just got over a pretty terrible sinus infection that just prevented me from doing a lot of the things I wanted to do. And today is the first day that the air has been clear enough um, from the smoke from the fires in Canada. Um, so this is the first time I've been out here in a little while. Now I did take some footage over the last few weeks um, because I wanted to make sure you got to see some of the things in full bloom, like my rose arch. Um, it was in full bloom about a week ago and now there's just a couple blooms on it, but I wanted to make sure I got some video of that for you to see. So you're gonna see some differences in real time here as we walk around compared to a few of the clips that I'm going to show you. So the weather here has been very dry uh four weeks about is what we went without rain and then we finally got two rain showers over the last week um not a ton of rain maybe like a quarter inch um which is something i'm thankful for it um but you know there's just nothing like rain for your garden it just really makes everything explode with growth and we have been hand watering but i just know there's there's a difference so hopefully soon here we actually get some decent rain 
Um, but since I showed you around last time, everything has been planted out. Everything is pretty well established. Um, and we've got some things to harvest today. So I have some lavender and some herbs, kale. Um, there's peas. I have been harvesting from strawberries. We're gonna go through and see if there's any more today. Um, but yeah, so let's just go take a look at how everything is doing. All right, so I'm gonna start, ooh, bugs. I'm gonna start at the front of the property because the farmer behind us has a tractor out right now and it's quite noisy. So let's see what is happening up here. So here's the front in ground garden space. All of the strawberries are doing awesome. These are an ever-bearing variety, but you can see some nice looking, whoop, nice looking strawberries in here. There is nothing like a fully ripe, warm strawberry straight from the garden. So walking into this space, remember all of those volunteer sunflowers? I let quite a few of them go and now it's created this kind of fun um, sunflower forest and I'm digging it. It's kind of whimsical. Um, it's a little interesting getting in here though from that direction. But we've got all of our salad greens, planted celery and Brussels. Those are looking awesome. I did plant. This is a toothache plant. It's also known as Spilanthes. And if you chew on these flower buds here, it will numb your mouth. Hence the name toothache plant. Um, along the walkways, I decided to um, put nasturtium and calendula, every other. Um, we've got a few leeks up there, some more strawberries, some cabbage. I did decide to go out and I purchased some zucchini from a local greenhouse. I wasn't going to grow any and then I decided that I really enjoyed using the mock pineapple in some baking recipes and in some, um, some meals for dinner, lunch. So I decided to get a few so I can show you how to make the mock pineapple. And then I have, I believe these are cantaloupe here. And I got my borage to take off. I'm so excited. This is the first year that it has transplanted well. Look at all those buds. It's going to be so beautiful. I'm excited for that. I do have some random okra in here. I'm gonna plant some more okra in the back. So that's what's going on in here. The other strawberry beds back there and then my potatoes are doing awesome. I need to come through. I did like hill some of the straw around them uh maybe a week or two ago and we've got some more straw up there so we're gonna build those up a bit and then i planted all of my squash in here which it looks like i may need to pull back some of these potatoes so they get enough sunlight these two seem to be doing okay these guys are struggling just a bit it was a bit of a chance to um, plant them up here because it just doesn't get as much sunlight so we're gonna see how they do it's not like a huge deal if it doesn't work out I can purchase um, some squash like winter squash locally around here from the Amish for pretty cheap so but I'm, I'm hopeful that it will still work out so we got all of our golden raspberries over there like there are just so many look at all of these going to be a good crop. These are a fall bearing or ever bearing depending on how you prune them you can get um, a summer and a fall harvest so that's kind of how I do it. And then right in here I just planted a whole bunch of different flowers that are all doing pretty well although <laughs> some of the ones back there are really getting shaded out by the sunflowers but it's okay we're just gonna let it do its thing see how it does. And then I've got cucamelons that I have been trying to get to actually grow up this obelisk here. I might have to come in with some twine to give them something else to hold on to. But look, can you see the itty bitty one? So cool. I love those pickled just like as fridge pickles. And then over on this side, 
I have my determinant tomatoes. And these, I'll show you in the back how I plant my indeterminate tomatoes. I plant them pretty close and I prune them. Um, these, I just let get real bushy. Um, because if you didn't know, determinate tomatoes have a determined amount of growth, um, like a determined height and a term determined amount of fruit they will produce. So I don't want to prune these. These are just going to get nice and bushy. Peppers are doing well all through here. Um, and I do have some onions here. I'm pretty sure these got hit with um, the allium leaf miner because you can see they're all gnarly here, all twisted. That is a telltale sign of a, the allium leaf miner. Um, either that or like herbicide, but I don't know why they'd be the only thing affected and nothing else. So I'm thinking it's the allium leaf miner. And I had that last year and honestly, I just kind of let them go and they recovered. So we'll see how they do. I am loving all of these nasturtiums. I think this is Alaskan. I have to look up the variety, but they're so beautiful. And these are all edible. They're pretty peppery, kind of like um, an arugula. Um, but you can throw them in your salads. Oh, here's a calendula that bloomed. These, I think this variety is Snow Princess. Really pretty. Here's an overview of this space. Everything's looking pretty good. Got my elderberry, which are looking nice and healthy. This rose bush, the one that I was so, here, let me go around the other side. I was so concerned that it had died. It is indeed alive and look, it's teeny tiny first bud. I could remove that and allow it to focus on root growth, but I'm a sucker. I can't, I can't do that. I just love the blooms too much and it'll be fine if it takes a little bit longer to get bigger. So there's a few more buds down there too. I'm excited to see what that one looks like. Leatris here is coming along nice, starting to form its spikes. And then this potato bed just started to flower. You can see that one lone white bloom there. So with potatoes, they can be harvested as soon as three weeks after they have finished flowering. Um, that's more of like a new potato, smaller potato. Um, the skins aren't so hard um, and thick. Um, but if you want more of a storage potato, bigger potatoes, you're gonna wanna wait until the leaves have completely yellowed, the stems have just died back and they've fallen over, then you are for sure ready to harvest. You can see all of the peas. They're doing really well back here. Got a whole, this is eight feet of them here. So we're gonna be harvesting them a bit later. This is the new strawberries. They're doing really well. We're gonna get a harvest from them. And then here are some of my indeterminate tomatoes. I do need to come through here and single stem them and remove all of the suckers. I do that because I like to plant pretty close. These are about 14 to 16 inches apart. And I make that work by single stemming them and I haven't had any issues with that. So I've got this bed of tomatoes to do and then two more there and then one all the way out back. Unfortunately, I have an onion thief. You can see all of the places where onions are that have been <laughs> taken out of here. I don't know what it is. I'm assuming it's birds. So I'm going to come through here a bit later and I'm going to put um, some row cover over these to hopefully save them or else I might not have much of an onion harvest. I think I've already lost probably 15. <laughs> so yeah. Um, peppers are looking good. They actually haven't stunted even though I planted them out early. They've been growing really nice. And then I've got my beets over here, which is really taken off. You can see the actual roots there starting to form. So maybe uh, a couple more weeks and we'll be harvesting some of them. This bed here, I just recently planted. Uh, I don't think you've seen this one yet. So I've got more celery 
I've got two rows of carrots. These are dragon tongue bush bean. And I planted some peanuts here, which I'm super excited about. They all just started sprouting. So we're gonna see how they do here in this climate. So I think last time I said I had just planted these carrots and I used the method where I just planted them in rows and I put a board on top. And it worked really well. I actually had germination this time. So I guess this is, this is the new way that I will be planting carrots. Um, potatoes looking great over here. Look at these beautiful purple peas. There's a few of those that are ready to be harvested and they have the most beautiful flowers. Like a periwinkle and a magenta. So pretty. So these two beds here just kind of mirror each other. I just have some cut flowers in each of those and I do have a tomato in each of these cages. They were overflow tomatoes and I just could not bear to um, put them in the compost pile and no one else wanted them. So that's where they went. And then since the last time we walked the garden, chamomile really grew quite a bit. It was teeny tiny last time. I put some portulaca in here, which is kind of slow to take off, but hopefully it'll be like a nice carpet of portulaca here. And then my leeks are looking a little bit chunky. They were pretty straggly two weeks ago, so that's exciting. On this side, I planted my cosmic cherry petunias. These are edible and quite beautiful. Um, supposedly these taste like cherry if made into like a simple syrup. So we're gonna try that. I need to harvest some of those. Dahlias are looking good. I just topped them. Um, I think you need three, I don't know if you can see in there, three layers of leaves and then you can pinch the top off and it will get bushier and branch out. You get more blooms. Red cabbages doing okay. Not too much happening in the way of forming heads yet. But my kale is amazing. Look at how beautiful this purple kale is. So we're gonna be harvesting a good bit of that kale there. Got all of my bush beans. These are yellow and green bush beans. The rest of the cabbage over here. This one looks like it's actually starting to form a head. So we'll see if this experiment works and we're gonna get some cabbages this year. Over in here, we need to get into the rhubarb. I need to harvest some of this. I've got some plans for that. This raspberry bed is just nuts. I'm not even sure how I'm gonna harvest all of the raspberries because they're just growing all in there. I need to thin it majorly after this season. It's just a jungle. And here is my climbing rose. You can see just how beautiful this is. It's like a peachy cream. It smells heavenly. But this entire arch was covered. It's amazing. Strawberries are doing really well. Back here, these are my June bearing strawberries. And there's a whole bunch in throughout here. So we're gonna come through and harvest them. And then I planted some corn in there. Not all of it came up, but that's all the corn that I had left. I think I'm gonna come through and put some okra seeds in here. And then on this side, I planted a whole four by four bed of zinnias. At this arch, I had planted some loofah and they never germinated until last week. There's a little guy there. So I'm just gonna let him go, see how it does. But this here is a jack the little pumpkin, like the teeny tiny little orange pumpkins you can see around fall. So, so hopefully that grows up and over this trellis and we have lots of little baby pumpkins on there. These carrots are looking good. Um, I don't think anything worth pulling yet. And I've got more tomatoes. I do have like basil and marigolds planted all throughout back there. I 
put in a few seeds of Swiss chard. This is honeywort and more onions, more celery, more tomatoes, and then I have another little spot here for corn. Here is my keyhole garden. Lots of stuff going on in here. Look at the amount of lavender blooms. We're gonna be harvesting all of them. Got a few random strawberry plants in there. We gotta grab strawberries. One of my newly planted David Austin rose bushes here. Starting to bud up. These buds, I don't know if you can see that, are infested with aphids. So I gotta come through and squish all them off. But I did plan out some annuals. I've got Clarkia, um, Copper Plume, some Sweet Annie. Oh, what else do I have in here? Uh, well, that's chamomile. The Canterbury Bells have bloomed. They're looking a little bit haphazard though. I need to find a way to support them a little better. And this rose bush here is just putting on a show. And then foxglove are kind of coming to an end here. Um, I planted some crispedia. There's a ton more um, volunteer calendula. There's salvia in here. Um, lace flower. More sweet annie. Some parsley. This is status. And then my other David Austin putting off blooms too, so we'll have some more color over here. That comfrey, I'm just not gonna focus. The comfrey is starting. It's a flower too. Lots of stuff getting ready to bloom back here. Butterfly bush, almost ready. Milkweed, almost ready. Yarrow, almost ready. Lots of beautiful things to come. All of the apples are looking good. You can see that little guy right there. I have different types of amaranth. Um, there's one back in there too, and there's one on the opposite side, all different colors that will get really tall. Um, we put on a nice show in the background. Chives are coming to an end. A certain cat has been laying in my St. John's wart and has basically killed off a ton of it. So we'll see if we get any blooms on it this year. The um, Olivia Rose is still looking pretty good. It's looking a little bit sad, actually. Um, I need to come through and deadhead a bunch of this, but still some really beautiful blooms on here. And then I've got some more peppers, um, different types of salvia, more calendula, the columbine that are still performing, the atris starting to form all of its spikes, and the blackberries are looking good too. I still haven't found a permanent spot for them, which is something I should put at the top of my list. I do have some echinacea back here. It looks like that's going to flower soon. I planted some fennel and some more parsley for the butterflies. And I think finally, I think the yellow campaign is soon done growing. And I think these are all going to be flowers. See? And what kind of flowers are those? I'm pretty sure it's kind of like a daisy and a sunflower mix. So that'll be neat to see that. And the last bed that I have is these are all paste tomatoes. Everything else up in the in-ground space, um, those are all slicers and cherries. These are my paste. So, to come through here, and I might prune some of the suckers off of them. Um, I might let some of them go, but I've got different basils, the basil tea, and some marigolds. So that's pretty much everything. The last space I did want to show you though before I get to harvesting is the side um, deck area that we were working on. So this space here on the side of our house is pretty messy right now. We're still working on finishing it. Um, but I'm really happy with how the walkway turned out. So we took a trip to Lowe's. Mm, it would be two weekends ago now. Got these pavers. It looks pretty 
messy right now. My husband was cleaning out the gutters and there's dead leaves in here. Um, but I just put some small little rocks in between there and then this is all gonna be grass around the edges. Sorry for the road. Um, I planted some dianthus and petunias in here that I'm hoping will just kind of take over, but it's been super dry. This ground here is not good like the back. The back where I have, um, you know, worked really hard at getting the soil to be really healthy. This is like super heavy clay. So I did put some mushroom soil on top of here. I am gonna mulch this as well to try and retain some moisture cause they're suffering. Um, got some daisies here. I planted some mullen back there and <laughs> that's another random squash plant. I just didn't know where to go with it. So it just got put there and we're gonna see if it grows. Um, my green stock is looking awesome though. This is the first year I've had anything do well in it. So I've got a bunch of nasturtium and petunias. I've got pineapple, sage, celery, um, cilantro, which is going to seed. I've got, what else is in here? I know there's some, oh, it doesn't want to turn. Lemon mint, some basil, parsley, and I've got some pine berries up on the top, but that's all looking really good. In this bed, I planted some zinnias, nasturtium, and two mystery flowers that I did not label. So we're going to see what those are together. Obviously this whole thing here is a mess. We need to clean that out, put things away, and then we're gonna get some lattice to put there. I do want to paint these beds too at some point. Now, this whole bed is basically a basil bed. These are all different types of basil, except for that that's one lone rosemary. Rosemary, oh my goodness, rosemary. Um, but this is all for basil tea. So I've got lemon basil, I've got cinnamon basil, blue spice basil, I have Thai basil, and then I do have, these are all straw flowers in the back. But here is how it kind of looks coming from the back of the property out here. So we still need some mulch. Just thinking about getting a little bistro table. And then um, I want to paint these beds and we're going to put the lattice there. So it's getting there. Friend, thanks for hanging out with me in the garden today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And be sure to share this video with all of the garden lovers in your life. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a blessed day and I will see you next time. Take care.